Hey everyone, I've got a new machine to review today. It's the Four Mark II Smart Vacuum Former. What's a smart vacuum former? Well, there's no point telling you when I can show you. So let me get it unboxed and we'll take a look. So this is the transparent PET sheet. It's 0.8 millimeter thick and it has this little QR code at the corner for the 4 Mark II to recognize. Now this is their interface. Select operation mode. I'm just going to select simple mode for now. And it has four selection for you. I know the interface looks like touch screen, but actually you have to use the dial. Right now I'm going to select um, rough mode low sheet so i'm going to place the sheet inside the format too adjust it okay sheet detected you can see the material is pet color transparent thickness 0.8 temperature 125 celsius degrees set complete preheat now okay let's press the button and wait for it to heat up the target temperature is 140 Okay, lock shit and pull thing up. I'm going to turn it towards me. Pull it down. Lock it. And then pull it up. Okay, now it's hitting again. The target temperature is 125 degrees. I'm just going to put the mole at the middle. And now it is cooling. Now it's blowing and you can push button to stop blow. Okay, and then we can take it off. And this is the rough mode. You can use it in packaging or shipping because uh, it is not so tight. I just peel it off and uh, it's not bad. So this is a 3D body scan of my arm. I 3D printed it and I've been soaking it in the water. Hopefully it can dissipate some of the heat. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this Kydex uh, material. Uh, there is, as you can see, there is no uh, QR code on here, but that's okay because our Form Mark II is a smart for, uh, vacuum former and we can uh, change the setting inside it. Let me show you how I do it. For uh, this material, because the thickness has changed, it's a little bit thicker. Uh, I'm going to choose fine. Okay, I'm going to low sheet just like I did before. Put the sheet in. So once you put the sheet in, uh, go to material, hit select, they have FPC, TPU, ABS, PP, Kydex, that's what we want. And then we we'll go to color, black, thickness 1.5, okay. And the temperature says 170, let's try it. Okay, let's set complete. Lock sheet and pull frame up, okay. OK, 
Okay, we can put my arm in the center. Okay, I've got some ideas for that. Uh, we'll get back to it after it cools. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community where you can take a class and learn how to do pretty much anything. While YouTube is good for entertainment, the constant ads and stalling and teasers on so many channels these days made it a difficult place to learn specific skills. Skillshare is only $10 a month, has classes on thousands of different subjects, and is constantly adding new ones. Now, a lot of you ask me, Naomi, what's the best way to get started learning Chinese? And the answer is, I have no idea. It's my mother tongue. I never really have to learn it. But as most of you know, I learned English here in China. I never study abroad or live in an English-speaking country, while lack of immersion is a huge disadvantage, I've found that often people who have to learn English themselves as a second language have a lot of insight in how to best to teach it. So as counterintuitive as it sounds, today I'm going to recommend a Skillshare video by Francis Carlyle, who is not Chinese, but is a fluent Mandarin speaker from the UK. So, if you remember, I want, we've already talked about that one. I is wo, and want is yao. Wo yao. Wo yao. I want. I've been through the video. It's two hours, and you have everything you need to make your way around China as a traveler once the travel situation improves and we can easily go places again. Certainly, if you'd like to come get something manufactured here in Shenzhen, this is fine. Since the factories have translators for technical details, Skillshare is great for stuff like this. No ads, no fluff, just the information you need. If you'd like to learn a little survival Chinese, or well, pretty much anything else, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. So I'm going to use the Kydex material again. This is the 3D model of my chest. As the manufacturer recommended, I soaked it in the water also, but it can get kind of messy, so I'm not quite sure it was the best idea. But uh, I'm gonna give it a go.
okay I have this little knife I like what I want to do is make a sheet for it Okay, what are my thoughts on the 4 Mark II Small Wrecking Former? I think it's a great addition to any maker space. I think first you should have a good 3D printer, laser cutter, and CNC router. But combined with those tools, it opens up a lot of possibilities. Like the Grow Forge and Laser Box, you are paying extra for the smart functions and ease of use. But Again, like those products, that saves you a tremendous amount of training time and most people will be able to use it with only a few minutes instruction. The one caveat is I think this is a 12 years old and a product. Laser cutters and 3D printers can be used with adult supervision by children. The risk of a burn from sticking a hand up under the hood is really too high for kids to be using this. But of course, they can watch closely while someone else older uses it. 
I followed the instructions the format engineers gave me and 3D printed molds in PLA with a 1.5mm outer shell and 20% infill. I then soaked the prints in ice water and left them to drink. The water left inside the print made a huge mess during the process and ended up getting in the pump and all over the machine. Hopefully it did not damage it. I got about two forms off of each 3D printed model before it started to deform too much. In the future, I'll try PETG, but I really like better guidance from Formax on how to make reusable molds because the one of my chest took three days to print at such a heavy setting. It just doesn't make sense to do that if I can only vacuum form two sheets of Kydex on it before it's unusable. Overall, I think this is a minor problem that can be solved with some experimentation. They suggested sealing the print with epoxy, but trying to do that without blurring the low poly finish would be very time consuming. For now, you're going to want to cast the first mold in resin or plaster and then work off of that if you plan to form a large number of sheets. The Ford Mark II is also great for making custom packaging if you have an Etsy or Tindy store and want to make sure your product does not get destroyed in shipping. The build quality and interface is excellent, but given the price tag, it should be. Overall, I'd say this is something for a very well-equipped high-end home shop, say for a professional cosplayer, but more likely for a school, business, or a community maker space. If you are interested in the format too, I'll leave the link in the description box. That's it for today. I'll see you all next time. And remember, if I can do it, anyone can do it.